Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we're talking about bass fishing mistakes. We are entering one of the most challenging times of year for anglers and it's even more challenging if you're doing some of these things wrong. So today we're going to discuss some of the mistakes and how to correct them so you can keep catching fish in the late summer and early fall. The end of August, beginning of September, marks that early fall transition, and it is one of the most complicated times for anglers. That said, it doesn't have to be. The reason it is, is because of some very simple mistakes that almost every angler makes. And the reason why I can speak to them today is because Tim and I have made them over and over and over again, and that's how we've learned. So today I wanna to cover some of those key mistakes and then show you exactly how we adapt to overcome those things and avoid them year after year going into the future. The first mistake that we see this time of year is anglers holding on to old patterns. What I mean by that, we've already alluded to this in other videos. This time of year, things start changing even when you can't see it. And I'll get to why in just a moment. But what happens is your summer patterns are dwindling, right? Maybe you were the guy out on ledges and you were on a big school of fish. You were catching tons of them. Now all of a sudden you're catching less or you're catching one or none, but you're still out there checking those spots. Maybe you're the guy who's been throwing the chatterbait on the big grass flats. It was going pretty good, but it just seems like every Saturday when you get off work and you go back out there, you're just, you're catching less every time. What is the deal, right? This is a complicated time of year. Here's why it's so complicated. Somewhere in the end of August, in most of the country, the nighttime temperatures start to shift. The daytime temperatures do not, and that's the complicated part. If you're just going to the lake and not paying attention, nothing has changed. The day looks exactly like the day last week and the week before that. The problem is the nighttime temperatures have started to drop. And the second you have that first drop in nighttime temperatures, even if it comes back up after that, that first drop marks an actual transition. It's the beginning of the fish's shift towards fall. In some instances, they make huge moves right away. In some lakes, they don't. In some lakes, it's a little bit slower. But regardless, those first cooler nights, now I did not say cold nights, I just said cooler. The first cooler nights mark the transition. Whether or not it is still hot as can be, in the afternoon. With that in mind, holding on to old patterns, holding on to dwindling patterns is a horrible mistake. This time of year, fish are transitioning. They are physically moving. They are changing locations. There are a few different changes that happen and I'll get to each one of those and some of the key baits that we use to adapt around some of those transitions. But here's what you need to understand. The second those colder nights start to happen, because in some places it's a hard shift, grass starts dying. The second grass is not thriving, bass begin to abandon it completely. They're just poof, gone. They just leave that stuff, even though the days are still warm. We'll get to where they go in just a second. But regardless of whether you've got nights that are cooling down or a hard shift to colder nights, your fish are moving. So, number one is holding on to those old patterns. What do we do about it? How do we adapt? Here's what you do. You start trying to get ahead. Don't spend the time going back to the same places catching less fish. The reason why is that that will continue to get worse and worse and worse until it's gone going into fall. And once that happens, once it's truly gone, 
you will be so far behind the transition, you don't even know what the next step is. You don't even know where to look. The angler that is the most prepared in fall, the guy who's got the most success, is the guy who started following them the second the transition began. Because that guy can piece it together. Oh, they're shifting out of this grass, they're going this direction, they're ending up on that wood. Okay, let's go over there. There's a few here. Next week, there's more. See, now he's ahead of it. That guy's got a pattern. As that develops, he's on it. He's jumping light years ahead of the guy who didn't make the leap, who now doesn't know where the fish went, has no idea, and he's wondering when he finally finds them, how'd they get way over there so quickly? Well, it wasn't quickly. He failed to follow them. The second mistake that I see, even after an angler identifies that their patterns are dwindling, the biggest mistake is that most anglers will slow down. Logic says, if things are falling apart, the pattern is getting tougher, I should finesse fish. That's logical. Guys will slow down and they'll start finessing, right? They, they're drop shotting. Maybe they're throwing a jig. It's not necessarily finesse fishing. Maybe they're throwing a big worm, but they're slow fishing. If you are going to transition, if you're going to get in front of these fish again, you need to be fishing quickly. You cannot slow down. The reason is very simple. You just can't cover enough water. If you need to see where the fish are headed and you're doing it with a drop shot, it will take you days of extra time to cover the water that another guy comes along with a swim bait or a chatter bait and he's just blazing and boom, he gets a bite. Keeps going, nothing, nothing, nothing. Boom, gets another bite. An hour later, boom, gets another bite. Well, that guy realizes that he got all three bites up against a piece of wood out on a grass flat. Well, that's interesting. What does that tell him? The fish are pulling out of the grass. They're pulling the hard cover. We can tell you that the reason for that is the moment that grass starts to die, the fish abandon it, and what they're going to do is they're going to move to the nearest hard cover, be that rock or wood. That's what they do. There are some huge advantages once you understand that. So you need to speed up. Don't go to slower presentations, go to faster presentations. If you've still got a lot of grass, the chatterbait is a fantastic option to cover water. But we're going to get into our third thing here in just a moment, and that is that most anglers continue to throw the mid sizes. And I'm gonna tie that right back in here in a second. Most anglers, if they were catching them on a 4.8 Kitek in the summertime, even after they realize they need to adapt, they'll continue to throw a 4.8 Kitek just in different places looking for those fish. The best thing you can do is try to match the actual size of the bait fish. Going into fall, you've got two kinds of bait fish in your lake. You've got fully mature bait fish, big bait fish. And you've got bait fish that were spawned and they're growing up and they're immature, they're small. They haven't reached full maturity yet. They're smaller than normal, okay? So typically, as we head into this transition, you're going to see me fish the extremes. Bigger than what I normally fish or smaller than what I normally fish. We recently did a bait finesse tricks for going into this time of year, late summer. There's a reason we're advocating for throwing those little baits. It is highly effective. I just watched a huge blow up right over here. I've got rods, but they're not right in front of me. I'm just gonna let it go as, as bad as that hurts me. These fish, as they're transitioning, they're chasing actual bait. That's probably the biggest thing outside of understanding they're making a real move. The next thing to understand is that as soon as those cooler nights happen, these fish get very bait fish oriented. Okay, they chase a lot. Anywhere that that's an option. Now, if you've got a lake that doesn't have shad in it, a northern lake that actually doesn't have shad, they're still bait fish oriented, but it's not so aggressive. 
If you're anywhere in the south or middle of the country where there's bait fish, a lot of shad in the water, it's like a light switch, man. Boom, they are on those bait fish, which is another reason to throw some of those smaller, faster moving baits. But let's get back to covering water. So if you've still got a lot of grass, the chatterbait is incredibly effective. But one thing I would recommend is dropping down in size to something like the Minimax. This is that smaller, downsized chatterbait. I still like to throw it in a half ounce, but I throw it with a smaller trailer. That's the big bite, kamikaze swim on, but it's the smaller size. I'll link all this stuff in the video description for you as we get into it. But going to that smaller profile, but still in a half ounce, lets me just burn up the water, but it's a better match to those juvenile bait fish. And I just wanna get some bites and I wanna see where these fish are moving to. If I don't have that grass, I'm gonna spend a lot of time with a swim bait, a lot of time. If I'm finding them actually around bait fish, like balls of shad with fish around them, I will always start with the underspin, always. But if it seems like they're single fish that are still willing to chase, but they're not on balls of bait, prime example of that for me would be like a blueback herring lake where you'll often see one bass after one bait fish there i do better with just the bare head without the blade if there's a bunch of bait fish in the water the blade gives you a larger presence you will pull fish farther in other words you will distract them from the thousands of bait fish to eat your one bait fish but if that's not your scenario no underspin at all, just the swim bait itself is a more natural presentation. Both of these are a three inch Largo. That is one of my all time favorite baits during this transition. I leave the little tail section in here, no matter which style head I'm throwing, because I want it to be a very aggressive kick. Water temps are still up, Fish are getting more active, not less active. They're chasing more. So I want a very aggressive swim bait for them to run down. This is a unique head. This is a ball head by owner. And I use this head really effectively out in deep water, even on light line. I'll throw it on five and six and seven pounds straight fluoro for those single fish chasing. Uh, and it works really well for me. In fact, that's all covered in teeth marks as I'm looking at it. So. Fishing the extremes. We just talked about going small. The other one is going big. Most anglers fail to realize how soon the big bait thing comes back. I mean, frankly, it worked all the way through the summer. We advocated for that. But as we get into fall, it's even a bigger deal. Whether you're throwing a big wake bait on top, shallow cover, around hard structure, docks, laid down trees, etc or you're throwing that glide. That could also be up around shallow cover. It can also be out on open water breaks, ledges, things of that nature. This is an amazing bait, by the way. The, the bait sanity, Chimera, I think is how you say it. The Chimera Shad. That bait, we're gonna call this like a chopping style glide where you're working that reel and that bait's just but what makes it so special to me is that even on a straight retrieve, it has a super, super aggressive swim. Uh, you guys know how much I love an S waiver. There's so many glides that we like, uh, but this is a very unique, very aggressive bait. And for active fish, I would argue it's probably the most effective glide bait I have seen. That is a remarkable bait if you have not taken a look at it yet. So again, whether you're wake baiting or gliding, this is a very good time to go big and cover water as well. Okay, so we've talked about the extremes. Here's, let's circle back to that grass dying deal because I wanna make sure that you guys understand what we do from there. As the grass dies back, even when it is still alive, but it's not flourishing anymore, it starts producing less oxygen. If it starts to die, it produces no oxygen. The fish vacate that stuff so fast. And like I've said several times now, they go to hard cover. They go to hard structure. Okay, what that means to you, if you are on a lake 
that has giant grass flats. You know, there might be a quarter mile of grass. It takes you all day to frog that flat. The second this transition happens, that quarter mile of good water might turn into three good spots. If there's a couple laydowns out there, they are on them. If there's no laydowns, they go like a bullet straight to the bank to the nearest hard structure, whether that's a laid down tree, whether that's a dock piling, whatever it is, they get right on that wood. And I mean, it happens now. The result is that you can smash those fish. What was taking you a full day of frogging can now be done in 15 minutes with a jig or another bait. It really locks those fish down. Once you understand that, this time of year where guys are struggling becomes an amazing time of year. See, I'm excited about it. I'm talking about struggles, but I'm talking about them in a positive light. I want you to understand this doesn't have to be a rough time of year for you. You just need to wrap your mind around staying away from the mistakes. So once we know they're headed to hard cover, get in front of them. You want the nearest hard cover to the places where the grass is. If you're on a grass flat, look for that hard stuff. Look for dock pilings, look for laid down trees, stumps out on the river channel, whatever it might be. The nearest place that they can go, that's where they're headed. Once you prove that to yourself, once it's worked once, you can run all over the place building that same pattern. Now, how do we fish for those fish? If it's laid down trees, like Clear Lake, it was clockwork, Clear Lake in California, those fish would pull out of those grass flats and boom, they're in the laydowns. There's not a lot of laydowns, which made it incredible. Half ounce pitching jig, no surprise. What's my favorite color? Go to. Probably the biggest difference is I, I like to go to a five inch double tail grub. Again, these fish are aggressive. They're now ambushing food, they're hunting. I like the movement of that double tail grub. It's not too aggressive, but it's a lot of movement. But that pitching jig that I advocate for year round becomes incredibly effective. I'm no longer fishing these giant flats. I'm coming in to that one laid down tree and I'm picking it apart with the jig. Pull a fish off this corner, pull a fish off that corner, pull one off the main trunk and I'm gone. I just saved myself three hours of fishing. Go to the next one. It might be 100 yards away, it might be three miles away, but go to the next one, repeat. It's incredible how easy it is. The jig now by itself can target all the fish that I was throwing five different baits for on a giant flat. I'm doing it all right here, that simple. Now, if you are in a lake, with a lot of docks, they are pulling into those docks. They are, they're getting up under them, they're sitting up against those pilings and they're ambushing from those shadows. That is a fun scenario. Again, I advocate for a jig a lot. Uh, I like to throw a finesse style jig in that situation. It works incredibly well. It's been working for me for forever. I don't even remember how long ago I started doing it. Again, double tail grub, the three eighths ounce finesse jig, because I can go to lighter line. Some lakes are clear water, some it doesn't matter. If it's clearer water, go to a lighter jig, go to lighter line, go down to like 10 or 12 pound, you'll get more bites. Places where it's murky, don't even worry about it. But the jig is incredibly effective. But we're talking about fishing those extremes. Here's something I want you to consider. The BFS guy, even if you're not a BFS guy, if you're a spinning rod guy, Fishing the extremes, downsizing. There's a lot of pressure on our fish these days. This is a trick I've been using and it works. This is the 2.5 inch ring craw, little micro creature bait, right? I'm putting it on a little tiny ball head, little tiny, 2.7 grams. I'll, again, I'll link it all in the video description. You don't have to try and memorize this. I'll link the exact head. I'll give you the exact size, all that stuff, favorite colors. But I'm going from something I know works to even lighter line, even smaller presentation to get more bites. I may not get the biggest fish under the dock with this, 
But if they're under the dock, I'm gonna find out about it. I'm gonna start catching fish and I'm gonna build my pattern faster. Once I know which docks are holding the fish, I can come back, fish my traditional baits, try and catch those bigger fish. But again, this is transition time. We wanna be out in front of those fish. Going down to that little micro craw or micro creature will get you bit. And then last but not least, this was pretty darn cutting edge last year. Now it's mainstream. The, there's a bunch of names for this category of baits. You can call it the poop category. You can call it gravity baits. I've heard them called gravity baits. I've, call, I've heard them called heavy baits. Uh, but this, this category is booming. There's now tons of baits in the category. These are weightless baits that are very heavy on their own. They fall very, very quickly. If you wanna give your fish a different look, maybe you and everyone else throws a jig, or maybe everybody throws a shaky head on your lake, you grab a gravity bait, weedless, pitch it up under that dock, let that thing fall, and then pop it up. I like to be really aggressive with these baits. To me, it's like the reverse of a Senko. Senko is all about the fall on the way down. For me, these gravity baits, I wanna get them in there, get in around those dock pilings, get it to the bottom. And then when I pop it up, it's that aggressive movement coming up, followed by that quick fall. It's a reaction strike. So a Senko is all about the fall going down. For me, this category of baits is all about what happens when I pop it up off the bottom. Very different, but very similar. If you're looking for something different, you wanna give them a different presentation than everybody else, this is really effective. All right, guys, with that, I think we're going to wrap it up. Again, you know, there are some common mistakes. The mistakes are guys refusing to adapt. They're chasing those old patterns. They're not looking for the new. Uh, guys that aren't matching the size of the bait. They're not willing to fish the extremes. They're just staying in the middle, hoping it works. You need to stop doing that. If you were throwing a 4.8 Kitec and you think going to a 4.3 is gonna solve the problem, don't do that. Go to a 2.8, go to a Largo Shad, go to an eight inch glide bait, go to a big wake bait, but go to the extremes to try and relocate your fish. And then don't fish slow. That's that last one, that is important. You're trying to get ahead of these fish and you will never do it if you're just slowly creeping around, picking old water apart, you've got to speed up. You've got to pick up some kind of a reaction style bait and cover some water. Because once you start relocating fish, once you start getting bit again, you can pattern that. You can look at where did it come from? I think a lot of people fail to think that far ahead, right? They go down the bank and once in a while they get a bite. This transition, I want you to pay attention to where your bites come from. You're going down the bank. Did the bite come up against the stump? Did the bite come as you got to a point? Did the bite come in the back of the cove? Because there are fish already starting to push bait to the backs of coves too. It's early, it's early, but it's happening already. Where did your bites come from? Once you pay attention to that, you'll see a pattern in it. And the second you see a pattern, stop being the guy just going down the bank. Start being the guy who's running to the key places, whether that's in a bass boat, an aluminum boat, or on foot, go to the places that fit where you got your other bites. And if it happens again, you've got a pattern and you can build on that towards fall. You won't be the guy who's lost, who's wondering where the fish went and why he can't catch them. You'll be the guy who's got a pattern, who's got confidence, and who will keep catching fish going into the fall. Hopefully this helped you. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.